you can start over. You don't have to hold on to something that's not working for you. And you always, always, always have a choice. I'm Helena, a former NHS doctor turned life coach. Since leaving medicine and starting my coaching business, I've worked with clients internationally to help them transform their mindset so they can be, do, or have anything they desire. And in the process, I have created my own dream life too. If you're ready to take the reins on your one precious life and level up with me, you have come to the right place. Hi my loves and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Helena and I'm a former NHS doctor turned life coach and I now help disenfranchised doctors figure out their next steps inside or outside of medicine. I'm really excited to bring you a video today on alternative careers for doctors. This is one of the most asked questions I've had based on my last video and also with the client base that I work with. People want to know what can I do if I actually left medicine or medical school. Today I'm not only going to talk about the alternative careers for doctors but also the adjustments that you could make within medicine to make your career and your job more feasible and more exciting for you. And I'm going to finish on my three top tips for how to create and find job opportunities out there in the world outside of medicine. Before I go into detail on alternative careers for doctors and such, I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you for the incredible amount of feedback, comments, private DMs, emails that I got on my video for leaving medicine. The response honestly floored me and it showed me that there are doctors who are struggling with this profession and this career all over the world and speaking to so many of you guys has felt like speaking to soul brothers and sisters. I see so much of myself in you and reflected in our stories. How that links in today's video is just so that you guys know you are so not alone and there is always a way forwards for you. Whether it's inside of medicine or outside of medicine, there is always going to be a way. That being said, what's going to be the way forwards for you? Let's get into the video. <laughs> Some of the things that I have been asked by clients of viewers are, what would I even do outside of medicine? What could I do? What are the alternative careers for doctors? What are the allied professions I could move into? And what is even possible for me outside of medicine? I'm gonna let you in on a sneaky little secret. The secret is that you could literally do anything with your life, okay? Anything. Now, yes, there are some careers which are more closely linked to medicine and medical practice. That means that you would repurpose your medical degree and your technical skills that you've learned in medicine and use them in a related or similar career field, which may or may not include direct patient contact. But likewise, beyond that, you could do absolutely anything. Yes, you might need to retrain, you may need to gain additional skills or qualifications, but there's no reason that you couldn't be something completely different. I'm talking about anything from being a primary school teacher, a wedding planner, a sex therapist, like whatever you guys could imagine or could want for yourself, all of those doors are open for you if you choose to push them open. Take me for example, never in a million years in my medical degree did I think that I would start my own coaching business. No, I didn't think it. But the truth is, if it has been done, you can do it too. Do not limit yourself when it comes to thinking about what is possible for you. So here's what I know about you if you're a medical student or doctor. You have grit. You wouldn't be here if you didn't have grit. You're no stranger to hard work. You're highly educated. You likely have access to the best technology available in our society at current and to the internet where you can find out practically anything nowadays. And you know how to create results in your life and for other people. And so what does that tell me? It tells me that if you were to want to restart your life, rebuild from scratch, retrain, that you have the attributes, skills, and strengths that would make you able to do that. I know that if you've never considered anything different, that this video might make you feel a little bit uncomfortable, or you might think I'm a bit away with the fairies here. But honestly, <laughs> If you think there isn't a world for you outside of medicine, it's literally the opposite. The whole world and all the possible careers under the sun are out there waiting for you if you wanted to go after them. There are careers that you've probably never even heard of that people are going after, things like clinical UX, that's clinical user experience, building the interface and systems that doctors work on every day, becoming a well-being advisor in major companies or in universities and education systems, becoming an entrepreneur, starting your own business, whether it's in the self-development industry or in health tech, or whether you know there's a gap in the market because of how you've been working and you can see a product or a, an idea that you could monetize. There's a whole entire world out there that you and I don't even know about. There are jobs being invented all the time that I 
don't even know exist and likewise that you probably don't know exist but might be a great fit for you. So what actually are your options? Now, if you want to stay in the clinical medicine, first and foremost, there are adjustments that you can make that will make training feel a little bit more well-rested, that might take some of the stress and pressure off you if you're dealing with burnout. Now, these are things like going less than full-time in your training, taking time out of training for especially dealing with short and acute periods of stress, burnout, or personal problems discontinuing nights. I've heard so many people say that discontinuing nights would really change the job for them. Considering changing specialties or um, thinking about a different training pathway from the one that maybe you're on or the one that you're considering. So then there are other things that you could do to protect yourself and your mental health. These are things like going into education for a period, doing a clinical fellowship, taking an F3, F4, F5, so working as a locum for a longer period of time, and also giving yourself time to complete things like your further exams and not trying to stack them on and pile them on if you're already dealing with a lot of stress at work. So these are if you want to stay in medicine, you want to use your degree, you want to continue on the path that you want to make some small adjustments. What comes next? Maybe for you it's the system that's really affecting you and so thinking about non-NHS practice where you still work directly with patients is the key here. You could consider things like expedition medicine, armed forces medicine, becoming a doctor in a different setting like a ship doctor, prison doctor, working in telemedicine, so doing your consults online. And other things that you could do here are, for example, diversifying your career. You could train in aesthetic procedures like Botox, fillers, and minor procedures. And or you could retrain into sports medicine, um, integrative medicine. These kind of careers and these kind of options are relatively close to working in a normal clinical setting. So these might feel safer to you, more familiar, and or the shift in lifestyle and freedom that you're looking for. Then we can look a little bit further outside of medicine. So in these cases, your medical degree is likely to be very useful to you, but you will be banking more on your transferable skills. And applying into these sectors and industries may be slightly challenging in some ways. And in these cases, networking is vital. The things I'm talking about may be medical education posts. So like I was saying, applying to clinical fellowships or teaching posts where you build on your medical knowledge and share that with students. We could talk about masters, PhDs, research. So that could be a medical research. It could be in pharmacology or pharma research. Some doctors and particularly later on in training and in consultant posts can get into medical legal work and become expert witnesses public health and global health. And then depending on what your own personal interests are, if you were interested in health tech, for example, or medical technology and devices, these are the kind of places where if you have a prior interest, that flair and desire might actually help you to gain a role as a doctor in those industries where you can offer your opinions, consulting, expertise. There are an abundance of groups out there on Facebook and on the internet of doctors who have chosen to leave medicine and go into these, um, what I would say, almost allied professions. So drug representation, healthcare policy, medical writing. I remember seeing a uh, junior doctor who had left and started her own business doing medical writing for big companies who wanted to produce medically accurate pieces of information like blog posts or videos on things like menstruation, women's health. So if you have a flair for these kind of things, start investigating how you could repurpose that flair into a different job position and what might be out there for you. So what happens if we move even further away from medicine? We start getting into the territory where your medical degree is non-essential and the skills that you carry across are going to be your transferable skills and not so much the medical knowledge that you you have studied, learned, and accumulated over time. These are the types of jobs where you may need to complete further training, upskill, or get some education that you didn't have previously. These are the kind of careers that you might feel a little bit more frightened to move towards because it does feel like pushing the boat out when you're looking at something that you've never had experience in and that feels really different and far away from what you've been doing so far. However, for me, this was the idea that excited me the most. I really did want to create some distance between me and medicine and yes, I still use all of the knowledge that I got in my medical degree and things like understanding life and the human condition. I carry that forwards into my business and how I work now. 
So what kind of jobs are there in this area? Firstly, a lot of doctors who lead medicine move into consulting. So this can be medical consulting and or business consulting, which may require some degree of upskilling and retraining. You could go into finance and accounting. I know doctors who have left and are now pursuing an MBA and that's a business degree. Doctors who have left to build their own businesses from scratch with an entrepreneurial mindset. Like we talked about, there are other careers out there like clinical UX. You could go into a health tech startup other startups become a well-being coach, um, work in the self-development, health and fitness industries. You could be trained as a personal trainer, um, a health advisor, a health coach. There are so many different things that you could go into. And if none of what I've said floats your boat, it's probably because there's something better out there for you that might excite you way more than these things. I'm going to add a few more ideas to the screen now so that you guys can have a look. And if there's anything here that really excites you and takes your fancy, I would definitely pursue it, research it, find out more and start networking with people who are working in those industries. And whilst you're having a look at these ideas, I want to ask you the question, if you knew that you would succeed, what would you do if there was no shred of doubt in your mind that you could accomplish your desired results? This is such a powerful question that we use in coaching to get you to open up to opportunity and possibility and think about things as if failure was not an option. To link in with that, I'm now gonna talk about how to create and find opportunities for yourself out in the world. My first tip is to be vocal about your situation and about the fact that maybe medicine isn't really cutting the mustard for you. As soon as you start talking to friends, families, co-workers, um, allied profession colleagues, you'll start to hear more stories about people who have left medicine and or um, changed their career or gone to less than full-time training and built up a side hustle than you would have ever done before. Moreover, if you start being vocal about the fact that you want to leave the profession and you're looking for a new opportunity, people will then be able to link you up with people who might be looking for a doctor or someone like you to fill a job role. They say that your network is your net worth and guys I wasn't looking for another job when I chose to leave medicine but by word of mouth and by telling other people and being vocal that I was leaving medicine I had two people offer me jobs. I didn't ask to be linked up to a job I to be honest wasn't really interested in pursuing those jobs but be vocal and see what comes your way that will open up doors for you opportunities and also you'll be able to hear more about stories of people who have left and get more information. My second tip is to start believing that there is more out there for you. And I'm talking about a deep-seated belief that there is more out there for you, that there is a better way for you to live if medicine isn't working for you right now, because I promise you, there is. You may have no idea how that's gonna look, but if you're struggling right now, there is always gonna be a job, a position, a way of living that allows you to feel less stressed, more calm and more happy. If at the moment it's just really not working for you, I promise you there's another way and you don't have to stay there and live in pain. With my coaching clients, I often talk about the concept of getting into alignment. And what that means to me is often, if you're coming up against resistance daily, it's kind of like being in a river. You can try and swim against the flow of the river and you don't get very far and it's a lot of effort, or if you start to follow what feels easeful, enjoyable and pleasant for you and you stop trying to swim upstream, you float along with the river, the tide is able to carry you and you get way further as well. For me, that's the notion of alignment. For me, starting my own coaching business, yes, there's a lot of work involved and behind the scenes things that I didn't even know that I would have to do, but because I have this bigger vision and the drive and motivation to help people who are in the same position that I used to be in, this work doesn't feel like work. <laughs> so if you currently have a limiting mindset that you don't believe that there's better out there for you, I just wanna challenge you and say there is. Hold the faith, even when things don't look like they're happening or you don't see an easy way out, I promise you there is and will be one. Hold the faith, believe in better. <laughs> My third tip is to stay open and I'm gonna bring in a bit of neuroscience here and talk to you about the reticular activating system. Now, this is a structure in your brain that essentially acts as a filter and it will filter out things that you don't deem to be important on a subconscious level. So how does that look in real life? Well, if you wanted to buy a new pair of trainers, for example, and it's a specific type, if you're thinking about that on the daily, you'll start to notice when people are wearing those trainers. It's not like 
people weren't wearing those trainers before, but you suddenly become primed to seeing it because your subconscious mind values it as something that's important and of note to you. Another way that we might talk about this is if you are a parent and you are primed to hear your child's voice over all other children's voices. You are more primed to hear your own child's voice because your subconscious knows that that is something that is important to you. How can you use this when you're thinking about alternative careers for medicine? Well, if you hold the belief that there's no life for you outside of medicine or there are no jobs outside of medicine available to you, then your brain is going to filter out any of those opportunities and only show you the evidence that upholds and supports that subconscious belief. However, if you think there has to be a better way forwards for me and something better is gonna come my way, then your brain will start to seek out and find and take note of those opportunities. It might be as simple as a radio advert about a teaching opportunity or a notice on a pin board that you see at work. It might be a friend mentioning a job opportunity that they've had an opening for. If you're thinking that something better is coming your way, then your brain will start to look for those things. Additionally, if you are holding those kind of subconscious beliefs too, that there's something better out there for you, you will start to synthesize information together about things that you hear. You're more likely to go out of your way to research these things and to figure out what might actually work for you. I would strongly encourage you to pursue and to look into the ideas and concepts that excite you. It could be anything, you know, artificial intelligence, wedding planning, party planning, it could be current affairs, it could be politics, it could be interior design. Honestly, the world is your oyster and I just want you to feel that and believe that you can start over. You don't have to hold on to something that's not working for you and you always, always, always have a choice. All right, my loves, I'm just gonna leave you on the note of if you're still unsure about what to do, then I do offer free 30 minute consults, which you can book via my website at helenabridge.com. And I want to let you know about my program that I'm currently in deep creation mode building, and that is called Doctors on the Fence. It is a group coaching program designed for doctors who are feeling disenfranchised, undervalued, underpaid, and stuck in the system. And this clarity program is here to help you figure out your next best steps inside or outside of medicine, whether it's making small adjustments or major life changes and turning over a new leaf. So in that program, we go to town on not just what your desires are, what your core values are, but we also think about unpacking the stuff that gets in your way. So whether or not it's limiting beliefs around what you're able to achieve in this lifetime, fears about the world outside of medicine, the sunk cost fallacy, and I help you make empowering mind sh mindset shifts. Oh my God, why can I never say that word? <laughs> mindset shifts. Um, and able to create the results that you really desire in your life. So if you're interested in getting your clarity, creating your ultimate game plan and getting on track and in alignment in your life, then do consider joining the Doctors on the Fence program. The wait list is currently open and I'm launching at the end of March. I'm gonna leave you on that note and I'm gonna say have a fabulous day, fabulous week, fabulous life. And if anything really jumped out at you from this video, drop a note for me in the comments. I would love to know what you guys think and what you feel is possible for you.